Hi, my name is Justin Mansell, and this is a video to explain how to build a two lens re imaging telescope for a Shack Hartman wavefront sensor. In this video, I'll start by covering some prerequisites, then describe our optical setup, and then go into how to use the software to help you uh, make this measurement. So, the first thing you need to do is download the AOS software, which can be found on the AOS SharePoint site. If you go to the SharePoint site, um, sp aos-llc.com slash sites slash portal log in and go to downloads export controlled software and then current you can download the most recent versions of the AOS software and install that on your computer you also then need to plug your camera into the computer through a PoE injector we recommend plugging it directly into the computer and not through a switch or a router you also then need to plug in the AOS software key. This is a little green dongle that can go into a USB port. And we've already set up in this experiment a collimated beam. So this is a shear plate showing that it's nominally collimated and we have a big commercial off the shelf um, C-mount lens that we're using for collimation. Now onto the hardware. So now that we have everything set up, we can go to the AOS website and go to support. And uh, there's an application note here, number five, on getting started with the AOS hardware that has a couple of reference documents. One is a telescope design worksheet um, with field lens capability in it. Um, there's also a telescope design Android uh, application that you can download from the um, Google Play Store. So this is the two lens telescope design and we're not going to be adding any curvature to this today so we're going to be in this column and we're going to enter in that we want a beam that's like four millimeters uh, initial and final so we're just going to do a one-to-one -one re imaging no magnification we're going to be about a hundred millimeters away uh, from the object um, from the first lens to the object then we're going to be uh, using 100 millimeter focal length lenses and this is the design for our telescope so the total telescope length is 400 millimeters the separation between the two lenses is 200 millimeters and the distance between the object plane and the first lens is 100 and between the second lens and the image is also uh, 100 so uh, now we have a design for this we can go in and implement the setup Okay, so now that we've got the telescope designed, we can go through and actually build it. We're actually going to use the wavefront sensor for feedback in this video. So, let me point some of these things out. Uh, this is the Shack Hartman wavefront sensor. Um, I've already put in post holders uh, for the two lenses and for the device we're going to be testing here. Um, and I have two different views of this. Um, I have the, a view from a camera on the, the right uh, that is um, looking sort of down the barrel of this so I can show the beam. Um, and I have a view sort of from the top here as you can see this all go together. Okay. Um, you can barely make out in this, in this here, the, uh, right over here is the fiber uh, going into this um, C-mount lens collimator. We've already collimated the beam coming out of this, so we're basically ready to go. Um, first thing I'm going to do is bring up the AOS software, and I'm going to use the software actually as feedback for doing the alignment in this system. So I'll bring this up and tell it to bring up the image, and let's also take a look at the wavefront for this one. Okay, I'm going to put these up here. And then I'm going to go into the software and select the camera. So we're going to be using this uh, Mako G30B wavefront sensor today. I'll select that. And it goes through and initializes the connection. And I can grab a frame from it. Let me take a look at my histogram. I'm in pretty good shape here. I could increase the uh, exposure a little bit. In fact, when I do that, I'll click on Setup and bring this up to V150. There we go, that looks a little better, we're in that 90 range. Um, bring this back on. This is the default set of AOIs that comes up with the software. So I'm going to go in and create a new reference here, since I've got a collimated beam illuminating the wavefront sensor. 
um, and I have this iris open as far as it will go right now so I'll go in and click on create reference and again I've got an issue just like I did in the last video of these AOIs near the edges being suspect so I'll go in right click and drag and say delete outside rectangle okay so now I'm seeing a tilt term which is normal in the lab um, I also have the HEPA filters on over the table so I'm going to turn them off there we go um, gets a little less noise on the table when I'm making measurements there we go and I've subtracted average tilt and now we're seeing some background noise on the order of 12 nanometers peak to valley um, you can go to analysis here and we can see that's a, a couple nanometers RMS for this condition okay so we're in really good shape so now I'm going to put in the first lens I'm going to do this while putting this in 2d plot mode and continuous acquire and so you can see I've got some background here uh, the first lens in the telescope and again this is set up so that the uh, lens uh, it's a plano convex lens and it's set up so that the lens is uh, has the curved surface closest to the collimated beam and the flat surface closest to focus and I'm going to turn off so it makes it a little easier I think to see the spots there we go um, I drop it in I've already set it up for the correct um, centration I think let's see if I got that right let me turn subtract average tilt off yeah I'm pretty close I'm pretty close in centration it looks like I could slide it a little bit to the left um, but I think that's going to be okay uh, you can see that with this lens in, this is that 100 millimeter focal length lens, I am not only diverging the beam fairly rapidly by the time it gets to the wavefront sensor. Let me drop a card in here, see if we can see that. Yeah, you can, I guess it would help if I took this window and made it smaller. There we go. Um, it's going through a focus about here, right there's the focus, and then it starts to diverge and illuminate the wavefront sensor. So the, the beam is massively diverging at this point, so much so in fact that we're uh, exceeding the dynamic range of the wavefront sensor, which is, as uh, I showed in the last video, easier to see in this slope plot. There's that massive diverging wavefront and you can see uh, I'm exceeding that dynamic range quite considerably. Okay, bring that out. Um, but I can also use this for centration. Um, and if I've done this all right, I can close this iris and I'm pretty close to center not perfect but pretty close to center here uh, good enough for this demonstration today now I can put in this next lens um, I've already worked pretty hard to get these lenses in about the right position um, so that when I drop in this next lens what I see is a nominal tilt term showing up in the wavefront and let me see if I can tweak that a little bit uh, again the flat surface of this lens um, here is toward the focus which is about here uh, in the space um, and then the curved surface uh, is uh, toward the wavefront sensor this will minimize the amount of aberration in the beam I can tighten that down and now I've got what amounts to just a, a large tilt term but it's not too bad I can see in especially in this zoom image I can see I've got the uh, spots fairly well centered in their AOIs Okay, so let me go back to image mode here, and this is just showing primarily a tilt term. If I stop this and say subtract average tilt and go back to continuous acquire, I've got a little bit of curvature maybe in the system, 100 nanometers or so, but now that I've got the lenses in, I can calibrate that out. And so the way I go about calibrating that out, you can do it either of two ways. If you like this reference set, um, then you can go into reference and click on recenter spots, and that will tell the wavefront sensor that the current spot locations are the correct spot locations. You can also just click the create reference button and go in here and eliminate any ones that you don't like. I'm again right click and drag, release the button and say delete outside rectangle. Okay so let me go single acquire and now I'm back down to a pretty good condition here. A 30 nanometers peak to valley um, and is sort of the noise on this and we're seeing about seven nanometers RMS um, looks pretty good okay so now I can drop in a device that I'd like to test uh, I'm going to drop in this one meter focal length lens and we're just going to take a look at it so I drop it in line it up and continuous acquire here 
I've already set it up so that that lens is in the image plane of the lens array and as such I am reading a radius of curvature of about 1 uh, to 1.01 meters. Um, this is the radius of curvature fit to the two axes. So, the, so we're reading exactly what this device is designed to do. So this is a nice way of re-imaging onto the lens array. And again, the, the reason for doing that, as I mentioned in the last video, is that when I put the lens directly in front of the wavefront sensor, there's a propagation distance between the lens and the lens array, and that uh, affects the uh, curvature that the lens array observes. So this video walked you through how to build uh, and design and build one of these two lens re-imaging telescopes, telescopes for Shock Hartman wavefront sensing. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at Active Optical Systems.